In the previous videos, you saw me repair two Cobra CPI 2575 inverters that were broken. And this one now is fully repaired. It should be good as new. And I'm going to see how this one actually performs. Now, the two inverters that I looked at inside, they were completely different. This inverter is completely different from the other one, and there's good reason to believe that they perform entirely differently. However, I'm just going to review one of them. On this inverter, the only thing wrong was one solder connection inside came loose. I resoldered it and did nothing else to it. So this will work exactly as it did from the factory. So I'm going to use this one for this test to see how it works. And here's my test setup. I have this inverter running off of two deep cycle batteries. These are fresh. They have a low internal resistance. They are fully charged. And it's also connected to a 45 amp battery charger, which is a good analog for a automotive alternator. That's connected to this battery here. This battery here is connected to the inverter through about one and a half feet of four gauge cable. Now there are two lugs on here, they're four gauge in size, two lugs for positive, two lugs for negative, and the astute viewer will note that I only have one of them connected. However, that's not going to be a problem because of their short length. That will work just fine, and to prove that, I have this connected this way. My multimeter over here, which I will set to DC volts, <clears throat> I have that connected to the second port. So that will monitor the voltage internal to this inverter out of this second port. And I know because I opened these up that these are strapped together with a very thick battery strap. So it's not a problem to power this off of just one of these lugs so long as this connection itself does not overheat. Same with the negative side over here. I have my ammeter clamp meter on one of the two cables. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. I happen to have it on this one. And let me zero this out once again. Okay, it looks like it actually is zero. These clamp meters aren't perfectly accurate when you move them around just because of the Earth's magnetic field and such. They'll change somewhat when their orientation changes. It's actually zero because it's off, so let's turn it on. <coughs> and there's my voltage, 14.6 volts and 0, 0.00 kilowatts because I have no load on it. 14.6 volts because I have it on this battery charger over here. You can see that my internal inverter voltage is 14.68 volts. Now for the load, I'm going to plug this in here. And for a load, I'm going to be monitoring that with my kilowatt, P3 kilowatt hour meter. I'll set that to watts for the time being. And let's turn on a load. I have this electric heater over here. I'm just going to crank that on high and see what happens. And you can see that with that heater on high, my battery voltage is 12.6 volts. That is very, very high and very acceptable. That heater draws 1300 watts and the output voltage remains at 16.6 .6 volts. Very good. The voltage is dropping as those batteries drain. It's drawing 130 amps, no problems. So let's turn on a couple of light bulbs here. I turned on two 100 watt light bulbs. And let's see how good the voltage regulation is. I don't have scientific equipment here to take a look at this. So what I'm going to do instead is take this heater, turn it on and off, and we'll check the relative intensity of these light bulbs to see how much the voltage droops or overshoots as the load turns on and off. And it's pretty significant. That's a sign of a very poor quality inverter. On good quality inverters, you won't notice these light bulbs change in intensity at all. They'll be entirely steady. In this case, it's a pretty significant change. But this is a, also a very low cost converter, so it's not a major problem. Now, this fan here seems to run uh, at a pretty high speed and is fairly loud, even under a light load. However, these fans are temperature controlled and they just now turned on. These cool the input stage as well as the transformers inside the inverter, and they just turned on now. And the air coming out is quite warm. 
The efficiency on this inverter is somewhere around 85% as advertised. That's middle of the pack. It's not great. It's maybe a little on the low side, but it's about average and about what you'd expect for the price point of this inverter. So that's not a major problem. Some of the best ones are up around 95%. This one's around 85%. Not terrible. And that was my power strip that just cut out, so let me reset things and restart my camera. So, this inverter claims to be a 2500 watt inverter. And judging by what I saw inside this case, that seems a bit of a stretch. I have my doubts, but I'm also going to give them the benefit of the doubt until I actually test it for myself. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to test it. So, this heater here, once again, I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn it on low this time and let the heater fully warm up. As it warms up, the wattage will drop. That's very normal for an electric heater. And on low, it takes about 790 watts, somewhere in there, at 116 volts. Very good. I'll shut that one off and turn this heater over here on high. You can hear that heater buzz away. It doesn't normally do that, but that's because it's modified sine power. And this one takes about 1300 watts, approximately. Also at 116 volts. Now, I can't bolt, plug them both into my kilowatt hour meter at the same time because this will overload. So what I'm going to do is unplug this one and plug it directly into the inverter. Now I can turn them both on. And this inverter should be able to power them both because it's a 2500 watt inverter. So first I'm going to turn this one on low. And once again we're going to wait for the wattage to stabilize. We're at around 820 watts, somewhere in there, 116 volts, and I'll turn this one on high. And you can see that the voltage output of the inverter sagged significantly. The battery voltage is still at 11.4 volts, that should be plenty high to run this. But the inverter simply can't do it. That's 108 volts. That means that my heater is only drawing 750 watts. So if we swap these two, plug this one into the inverter, and this one into my kilowatt hour meter, that one is drawing 750 watts at 108 volts, and this one is drawing 1140 watts. So that's only 1800 watts total. And this is a 2500 watt inverter. There isn't a whole lot I can say about this other than Cobra is absolutely 100% lying to you. This is in no way a 2500 watt inverter. 2000 is even a stretch. I'd call it a 1500 watt inverter. And that is really, really sad. Cobra, I don't know what to say. This inverter is not a 2500 watt inverter. I'm very disappointed in it. I was interested in how they constructed this inverter. It's different from most others in this plastic case. It's very low cost. They can make a lot more money selling it this way, but all they're doing is ripping off their customers. This is not what's advertised. Most other companies would advertise this as a 1500 watt inverter, maybe 2000 watts if they wanted to press it. Cobra is advertising this as 2500 watts. That is nothing but a lie. This is not a 2500 watt inverter. The next test I'm going to do on this is a little bit of a stress test. I have a 1300 watt load going over here with this heater. You can see that my battery voltage is plenty high once again. It'll droop down to 11.5 volts or so by the end of this test, I'm sure. But I'm going to let this inverter run at about the peak of what it's able to do. It's not even fully warmed up and it can only do 1800 watts pathetic. But I'm just going to let it run on this 1300 watt load, which once again is about the maximum it can really do. And I'm going to see what happens. 
Hopefully this thing can handle it and run that continuously, but possibly it can't. Now these cables here are only 4 gauge and I may have to terminate the test early because they're not exactly adequate. Um, and when I say they're not adequate, what I mean by that is that the cables themselves can't handle it. They are supplying plenty adequate voltage to the inverter. But I'm going to let this run for a while and report back what happens. This stress test has been running for maybe about five minutes and I just want to clarify one thing. These fans blow out, not in, as I had said before, so I'm not really sure how those transformers in here cool. Uh, when you blow out and suck against something, it doesn't really cool the components, there's no airflow over them. Um, people probably argue with me, but that's the way it works, scientifically. So, I'm not really sure what cools those transformers. They're probably going to get warmer and warmer, get less and less efficient, and uh, cause the inverter's output power to droop over time, but these blow out, and this one also does. And while I'm at it, I am going to measure the efficiency here. This is 126 amps, that's 11.87 volts, and this is 1,280 watts. That ends up being about 86% efficient. And I also want to note that uh, I'm going to plug this into my inverter again, because my power strip breaker is weak. It doesn't allow a 15 amp load like it's rated for. But I wanted to mention that the fans on this are cycling on and off. These fans on the input stage are temperature controlled. This one is load controlled. This will run continuously, and these are cycling on and off based on the temperature. So it does appear that the input stage of this inverter is adequate. The efficiency hasn't really dropped on this inverter as it's warmed up, and these fans have cycled on and off, so that can handle it. But for some reason, this inverter does not do 2,500 watts. It only does under 2,000. 